13 Week Theater is supported by Patreon. Subscribe now and get exclusive early access. Grimes's rise to stardom was almost a showbiz cliche. A struggling actress in New York, Grimes was singing in a nightclub in 1959. Playwright Noel Coward was in the audience one night and immediately cast Grimes in the lead role in his new play, Look After Lulu. Five years later, Grimes hit the big time by creating the title role in the musical The Unsinkable Molly Brown, a performance which won her a Tony Award for lead actress in a musical. With a few more successful roles under her belt, it wasn't long before Hollywood came calling. By 1964, multiple production companies were anxious to develop a television project for Grimes. Screen Gems executive Harry Ackerman commissioned a project for Grimes based on two plays that the parent company Columbia owned the rights to. The show was to star Grimes alongside comic actor Dick Sargent, who had recently had starring roles in two sitcom flops. But those are other stories. At the same time, producer William Dozier, who had a production deal with 20th Century Fox, tapped screenwriter George Axelrod, who was famous for The Seven Year Itch, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and The Manchurian Candidate, to also develop a project for Grimes. Impressed by Axelrod's track record, Grimes decided to go with Fox. She also talked Fox into buying out Dick Sargent's contract with Universal Television so he could star alongside her. Unfortunately for Grimes, Dozier was busy with a project that was turning out to be more work than he expected, a tiny little show you might have heard of called Batman. As a result, work on the Tammy Grimes show was delayed. Once Batman's difficulties were resolved, though, production began on a pilot, and ABC eventually picked up the show, slating it for the 1966-67 TV season. Uh, before we go any further, a uh, quick explanation is in order. Like most new shows that season, the Tammy Grimes show was shot and broadcast in color. Unfortunately, the only color footage that survives is from the original unaired pilot episode, which was inexplicably included in the network's upfront presentation for the season. All that survives of the actual episodes are low-quality black-and-white amateur recordings and work prints. So we apologize for the poor picture quality. Now back to the show. 8.30 will sparkle with another fresh new face for television viewers, the irrepressible Tammy Grimes. This delightful Broadway star is set to conquer television with her own new comedy series. No matter what Uncle Simon and Jay say, I'm really the only normal member of the family. Give me $5,000 in small bills or I'll blow your head off. I'm sorry, Miss Tammy. Your Uncle Simon would have my job if I gave you 25 cents without his okay. You know that. And if I were you, I'd put that thing away. You might hurt yourself. Oh, don't be such a silly. It's not even loaded. Just a minute. Wasn't that Upton from the bank? Yes. What did he want? Little milk of human kindness. He was recently fired, you know. I know. I fired him. How could you do such a beastly thing? You know he has eight children. He was pinching money from the till. Well, wouldn't you if you had eight hungry children? Certainly not. No, I don't suppose you would. You fall for the most simple-minded hard luck stories. If you had your way, you'd give away our whole estate. Hate a little. Leave a little. There's enough for everybody. And while we're on the subject, I need a little. <laughs> May I help you, sir? I would like to have one of those perpetual credit cards, sir. Of course. Won't you come right in and sit down, sir? Thank you. Like you're riding a television station. I'm one of those who would rather buy now and pay later. I understand. Money is old fashioned. And people get a little suspicious when they see the real thing. <laughs> it's not the dress for the timid or squeamish. Can you feel the tension? I thought it was the zipper. 
feel that power, naked power, begging to be tamed. Can you do it? With a chair and a whip, if necessary. You're coming with me. Where? I'm going to drag you into the 20th century. No, no, you're not dragging me anywhere. The bank examiners are coming tomorrow. But if you just add two zeros to everything, it will keep them busy for days. Tammy Grimes show debuted on September 8, 1966 at 830 and critics and audiences agreed. It was a complete and utter disaster. Axelrod had come up with a concept where Tammy played an heiress whose finances were controlled by her uncle Simon who ran a bank. To try and earn money of her own, Tammy decided to work in the bank along with her twin brother Terence, played by Sargent. The concept was hokey, the scripts were schlock, and worst of all, Grimes proved to be a terrible television actress. Coming from the Broadway stage where actors needed to be loud and expressive, Grimes just couldn't adjust her acting style to the confines of the small screen. She was alternately bombastic and inaudible, and her comic style way too broad for TV. $50,000 for the Widows and Orphans Fund. Oh, now, Tammy, what are you trying to do? Break this bank. Well, if it has to go, it has to go. I wondered where I left that. All right, put up your hands, all of you. Thought you could double-cross 0014, did you? 0014? I'm twice as good as James Bond. Hey. Whoa, and hold it. My brother is on the ship, and I have to see him off. Sorry, miss, there are no women allowed on board. Oh, that's the reason why. Love you all! They love you all. All right, back to work. It's your favorite dinner. Overcooked beef and undercooked carrots. And a surprise dessert. Burnt tapioca pudding? Well, there goes the surprise. No, no please. Oh, oh Tammy, let's give ourselves up. I, I'm all right! Terrence, please. If you just leave me alone, I was doing just fine, and the only thing I spilt was the salt. It's good luck. This is the best breakfast I ever ate. Me too. I'm delighted to hear that, because in five more minutes, you'll all be dead. Stop this man! He's walking down to See you next week, I hope. It also didn't help that while she had a great singing voice for the stage, her speaking voice was, well, one critic compared it to industrial equipment. Now add to that the fact that the 8.30 time slot put the Tammy Grimes show up against one of the most popular sitcoms of all time on CBS and a curious little space opera on NBC, and the writing was on the wall. ABC had committed to 13 episodes with an option for more, but in an almost unprecedented move for the time, the network cut their losses and pulled the show off the schedule after only four episodes. A full 12 episodes of the show never aired. The following week, ABC replaced the show with a new production that they rushed to the air, The Dating Game. Fox was so upset about the failure of the Tammy Grimes show that they let Dick Sargent out of his contract and junked the master tapes of all the episodes. Tammy Grimes never became a TV star. Instead, she returned to the stage, performing in revivals of a number of Noel Coward's plays, including winning a Tony for Private Lives and joining the original Broadway cast of Neil Simon's California Suite. As for Dick Sargent, well, that show that Harry Ackerman had commissioned for him and Tammy Grimes? It was Bewitched. After Tammy Grimes turned the show down, Harry Ackerman showed the pilot script to director William Asher, who signed on and cast his wife, Elizabeth Montgomery, in the lead, changing the character's name from Tamantha to Samantha, and cast Dick York as her husband, Darren. Bewitched became ABC's top-rated show and the top-rated sitcom across all three networks. 
And when Dick York's health forced him to leave the show in the middle of its fifth season, Dick Sargent finally got the role he had been forced to turn down three years before.